about the injustice that they see, the injustice that's being done to them, and they seek God's assistance. And then in the Old Testament lesson, the people are complaining to Moses, and they say, give us some water to drink. And so, as you can see in our opening slide, that became the theme for today's worship. Give us some water to drink. For we are thirsty and weary. And we cry out to you, O oh Lord. In these days when nature is bursting with life, yet wildfires rage and disease destroys, in these days when we search for renewed purpose and direction, let us gather to worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our broken ways so that we may live for you and for the sake of the people you love. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, let us stand and speak in truth about our lives in the presence of God and of one another. God of all mercy, empty me of my major judgments and aching disappointments and anxious crying and toxic envy, and breathe into me something like quietness and confidence, something like contentment, and please, dear Lord, gratitude. Catch my pride and doubt all her, that at least for the moment I may sense your presence and your care, and be surprised by a sudden joy rising in me now, a newness of life, a conviction of me love, a hope for tomorrow to sustain me in the coming then. God's forgiveness is healing, and it comes to us through our risen Lord Jesus. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. If you'll be seated. Our psalm today is Psalm 10. Remember that the psalm, the word psalm simply means song, and these were probably sung in, in services when people gathered together for worship. I'll read um, my part, and if you'll read the poem. Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In arrogance, the wicked persecute the poor. Let them be caught in the schemes they have devised. For the wicked boast of the desires of their heart. Those greedy for gain, curse, and renounce. In the pride of their countenance, the wicked say, God will not seek it out. All their thoughts are, there is no God. But you do see, indeed you note trouble and grief that you may take it into your hands. The helpless commit themselves to you. You have been the helper of the orphan. Break the arm of the wicked and evildoers. Seek out their wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nation shall perish from his land. O Lord, you will hear the desire of the needy. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear. 
to do justice for the orphan and the oppressed. So, so that those from earth may strike terror no more. Let us pray together the prayer of the dead. God of love, giver, giver of life, life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us. Renew our trust in your promises and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is Christ Be Our Light. And we're so excited that Sue can play it for us here, but we cannot <coughs> sing it. So, I think one should engage in mental humming and watch the words on the screen. Christ be our light. Testament reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, starting at verse 1. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord had commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt just to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? 
So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called that place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. And now we're reading the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I did these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? Or was it of human origin? And then they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, well, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority. I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two? Did the will of his father. Well, they said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And the people said to Moses, Give us some water to drink. What do people of faith do when they are parched dry? When the God we thought we knew, on whom we have leaned, appears to be far off. How do we trust? To what do we cling? As people of faith, we have all kinds of language for celebration and praise. We love to sing out our glorious hallelujahs on Easter morn, to sing praise to the Almighty One who reigns. But what do we say when we are mired in Good Friday? When we, like Jesus on the cross, and the people of Israel in the middle of the desert are weary from the journey, stooped 
with the burdens of disease and injustice, threatened by a loss of income and maybe security, and anxious about the future of our nation? What is it we say when we are grasping for water, desperate for survival? We ask, where is God? Why have you forsaken us? You see, it's easy to claim allegiance to God when the sun is shining and the trees are as beautiful as they are today. It is easy to lean on Jesus as a shepherd, searching for that lost sheep. Jesus as the one who heals us, the one who forgives us and promises us new life. But we are in a different season now, a time of dry desert wind and no water in sight. This is a place where we are reminded of our own frail bodies as death tolls rise. We are confronted daily by inescapable pictures of injustice and violence, injustice that comes with a name, like Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. 2020 continues to be a year that we are spending in the Sinai, a time when we are being compelled to let go of the things that were and to take up the back breaking work of becoming new people and together building a new community that rebalances society and rebalances our nation. In times like these, Israel cried out, give us water. And throughout the Psalms, we hear the Psalms saying, how long, O oh Lord, how long? This is the language of lament. The cry of God's people who find themselves at the bottom of the well, using the last ounces of their resilience and watching their faith and trust turn to dust. Lament is how people without power seek the truth. It names the evil that we see around us. It calls it out. It forces it out of hiding. No longer can we use excuses like, well, that's the way we do things. Or it's all a part of our history. Or even, you know, the excuse of last resort. Well, there's really nothing that we can do about it. In lament, the injustice stands naked before God. And in lament, we call on God to right the wrongs, to destroy the evil, so that we can once again trust that all creation is held in God's hands today, tomorrow, and into eternity. Here we stand mired in Good Friday, with brokenness all around us. And now we cry out, loud prayers that beg for the powerful love of the crucified one to draw us out of this darkness, to remind us that Easter is coming when we can put away our limits and break out our glories. We long for your presence, O oh God. Give us some water. Assure us of life. 
In the meantime, what do we do? How do we get from here to there? Well, we take up the work of the first son, hard at work in the Father's vineyard under the blazing sun. We journey towards the glorious by taking up the work of justice for the oppressed and doing the hard labor of making peace and bringing reconciliation between enemies. We stand with the weak, the vulnerable, and the innocent. And we understand that it is our call as followers of Jesus to protect and to defend them. What that means is we do the hard work of building God's kingdom and preparing Jesus' supper table for all the beloved children. We feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, and we wait. We wait, longing for light in the darkness, longing for peace in the chaos, longing for water in the desert. We wait for Christ, who is our light and our hope. In these times, we as people of faith use the language of the ancient Psalms to beseech our God for the sake of all creation. And then following Jesus, we look into the face of suffering and we see the hand of God pulling us into love. Not life just for me, but life for every one of us. Friend and enemy, sister and stranger. Today we cry out. We claim the truth of the violence and the oppression of our world, and then we trust in the one who conquered the cross and vacated the tomb. We lift our voices together, not to sing glorious, but to strengthen one another for the long desert journey ahead, trusting that God is leading us through death and into life. Long ago, in the desert of Sinai, the story is told of Moses striking a rock with his staff and bringing pure, life-giving water to the dry people. Today, we pray. Holy God, break open our hearts of stone and bring forth living water for all of creation that we might find our life in you and all may know peace. Amen. Amen. Join me now in humming the hymn, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word.
let us take a few moments and share our thanksgivings with one another. And I open up to those who are gathered in worship today. Is there something you wish to lift up as a thanksgiving? I am thankful that we are able to do this together. And it's just so much love we have for each other. So I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful that the technology is all working. <laughs> <laughs> and that there are so many of us willing to help out to make this happen. And we still give thanks for Justina, who's driving us from home. I'm thankful for vegetables and farmers markets. I'm thankful for spring. Yes, 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 yes. And changing seasons. Mm -hmm. Glory and the splendor of God's creation. It was beautiful driving out this morning. Thank you for the gift of life. Well, please remember that the ministry of Trinity Lutheran continues, even at a time when few of us can gather together. Many of us are gathering from our Zoom studio and watching online. Um, I'm sure Joanne continues to take gifts down to the food pantry, so if you'll drop them off, she'll be sure to deliver them. And now we are going to share the peace of the Lord with each other. And you are more than welcome to stand up in your place and turn to whoever you see and offer the peace of the Lord, but don't move. <laughs> <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Peace be with you, Sue. Peace be with you, Sue. Rick, peace be with you. Fauna, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Brother Paul. Peace, Joanne. Peace, 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 and now let us continue to stand as we enter a posture of prayer. We call out to you, Lord, in praise and thanksgiving, in sorrow and longing and in supplication and intercession for the sake of the whole of creation. Most holy God, who sustains us in times of trial, hear the cries of your people this day. Fires rage and justice continue, neighbors are in danger and disease continues its toll. We are weary, O Lord. Grant us rest. Lord, in your mercy. Sure. Gracious God, even though the days are filled with challenge, we offer our thanks to you for your continued moments of grace and joy, for shelter and food for friends and family. Open our eyes to your loving presence, but do not let us forget those who struggle to survive each day. Lord, in your mercy. Here. Holy God, protect and defend your children who are threatened by fire or water. Bring aid to your children who are lost in the maze of internet and homeschooling. Strengthen workers and bring help to the unemployed. Multiply our daily prayers for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Here. God of wisdom, Grant insight and courage to all who are called to be leaders in these troubled times. We pray especially for our bishops, Elizabeth and John, for the leaders of nations and tribes, for those whose decisions will impact our whole nation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of comfort, we remember today those we love who now live eternally with you, most especially Shelley. Grant comfort and hope to those who mourn and strength to walk this difficult path, for our hope 
is in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Hear now, O oh God, our petition. Lord, we ask that you be with all the school children and let them have to go to school. Please keep them safe and healthy and make you hear and be home for school. We ask that in your name, Lord. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you to be with the many people that are on our prayer chain. And we especially lift to you Steve and John and Peter and Lori and Sandra and Ron and Mason and David and Jan, Lauren Junior, Judy, Pam, Gary, Jeff, Wendy, Bob, and the precious children, Lord. We give it to you, Graham, Chase, Colson, Koopa, Lila, and Riley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we keep in our mind Emma, as she's lost her beloved mother, in her peace. And hope. Lord, we must hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for Dean Gale that she was able to be there yesterday for Emma and Paul and their family. Open all of our hearts, Lord, to not forget what they are feeling at this time. We also awesome time of loss. Help us, Lord, to remember to mail cards and make phone calls and to do whatever you direct us individually to do to support them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, they go for all of us. Nudge us when we need to to make a phone call to someone we haven't talked to in a long time, or someone who wasn't able to be here today. Check in with each other, and we ask you to draw us together in the unity of community and the gracious love you are so generous with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. If you'll please be seated, Joanne, do we have any leadership announcements? Thursday morning, we're meeting for the meeting Thursday night, uh, hard with it. Hong Kong is on the dome. We're getting ready for Thanksgiving dinner. It will probably be all take out, but I'm going to get the good thing situated and started. The Salvation Army has asked us for more help than one dinner on, so we're working on that also. What did you say was Thursday night? Um, we're talking about Thanksgiving dinner for the Methodist Church. Oh, okay. You know, what, the community, the community dinner. At 7 p.m. 7 p.m. and we can do it on Zoom yes. or go to the Methodist Church. Yes. That we're yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anything particular for the food bank? No. Okay. I hate us in pieces. We appreciate them. Okay. So a lot of fresh comes in from the food pantry itself. They have 
We still have canned hams downstairs too. I don't well, know if that's a plan. Okay. Yeah. I bought it too many. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was going to be a hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. you know, so right. So they're being used. They're, that's that's yeah. that's what matters. Yeah, we just we just made a meal out of this pierce fry and cut six. Very good. Okay. Anything recently from you? Um, no, not that I can think of. Okay, okay. I recommend cereal to the food pantry. The kids are home. They can exist on cereal. True, true. Right? <laughs> I, my children always wanted to eat Cheerios rather than whatever it was I <laughs> And no comments on my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I know what can we do. Let us now take a moment to consider blessing the person. And we can hear, you can only do it with people sitting next to you. But as I pray a blessing for you, receive that blessing. May today bring you joy and tomorrow bring you hope. May the rising sun assure you of God's continued presence. And may the rising moon be God's light for the darkness. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, hold you and grant you rest in these weary times. In the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, go in peace. Pray for one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you all for coming.